Thanks for staying with us. So joining us on the show is a renowned leadership trainer, an astute business and relationship coach based in Lagos, Nigeria, with over two decades of experience in ministry and leadership with a passion for helping people discover their purpose and develop their leadership potential. Welcome with us, none other than Pastor Godman Akinlabi in the building. You. Your first time on our show? Yes. You're very uh, welcome, sir. You're welcome. Thank we you. know of Pastor Godman, being very popular. Everybody knows Pastor Godman, but we say, you know what? It's time for you to get on your view because if you don't come on your view, they've not heard you. <laughs> <laughs> good to have you on the show, sir. It's good to be here. Uh, thank you guys for having me. and. Um, you know, I watch your view, and I love uh, the, the discussion, the, uh, you know, the, the perspectives yes. that come into issues, yes. especially um, issues, burning issues yeah. around the country and globally. Yeah. So we have just uh, about 40 minutes with you. I'll try to break that into a few parts, uh, because I know one of your core is leadership. And I think that um, we all as Nigerians agree that leadership is the, is the, is the core of how we can actually move this nation forward. Um, we need proper leadership. And now we've passed elections, people are hoping for the best in our country. But people are still worried because it's one thing for the head to say, I want to go this way. But there are multiple people underneath him that may not be aligned with that vision. So in, in your view, how does a leader ensure that every part within his own group or within his own administration or within a company aligns with the vision. It's one thing for an MD to say, we are going here. It's one thing for a chairman to say, this is what we want to achieve. But there are other people within that industry that, that may agree, but may not be totally aligned with the direction. So how does a leader get people to focus on where we are heading so we are all aligned? Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. I think it's important for us to understand that um, uh, leadership is both a science and an art. You know, it, it's, um, it's, it, it's both about the leader Social science. and uh, the people and the environment. So how do I mean is that the, the most important thing about leadership is vision. Uh, we're done with elections now and we have a new administration and they're, they're, they're trying their best to just uh, put the right things in place to do a fantastic job. But a need, there's a need for uh, a vivid vision that every Nigerian can key into. Let me give you an example of what I'm saying. If we say we're building a nation where every Nigerian can prosper in Nigeria, notwithstanding what part of the country uh, you hail from, or your religious orientation and all those other things. Then we all know that, okay, first thing about this vision is that we're gonna put our biases behind us. Uh, we're gonna focus on how we're gonna get this country to become better so that all of us can collectively benefit from it. Mm. Uh, the moment we can strike at that and sell that vision very well, one is that visioning, uh, conditions the heart of people and then it conditions the environment that's what it does everybody starts to see like okay this is why we're here this is what we want to do we say that a leader knows the way shows the way and leads the way you understand so uh, the, the, the essence of that is the first and foremost that the leader knows the way knows where we're going and then shows the way leads the way. So we exemplify it, we sell the vision, and then people start to buy into it. See, if we, let me just say this last thing. If we um, look at the way things are, Nigerians are perhaps uh, one of the most difficult people to lead. I was about to say that. Yeah, and our environment also makes it difficult to lead. We are multi-ethnic, multi-tribal, all right? We're multi-religious. Um, and then we have very astute people. How do you lead, lead a pack of tigers? Mm. <laughs> you, you know. But, but yeah. also we're traumatized people. We have been... That's another problem in itself. We have for because, years. Yeah, then we need healing. Mm. You mm. understand? Because when you're leading uh, 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 people who are bleeding, <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's tough because you have to literally drag them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. When you're leading uh, people who have been traumatized, who are afraid, they're very cynical. Uh, they don't believe what you say. Uh, you know, they, they struggle to actually believe the lead in leadership and to trust. So there's, there's, a, uh, there, there's a trust deficit in our environment. So 
even as I'm talking now, some people are second guessing what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> because you, 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 you can't trust a pastor. That's what they say. You can't trust a politician. Uh, you, you don't trust journalists. They always mm, lie. Yeah, you don't trust a lawyer. Uh, you know, mm. so people just so find it. Who do you trust? Who do you trust? Nobody. You trust yourself. No, it means that we have a problem mm -hmm. <laughs> because we can't trust each other. Yeah. Nigerians might be difficult people. We're not people without values in yes. the past. Yeah. But now, we're talking with the former minister for works and housing on the show on Friday, and it was largely about the corruption we're dealing with. Generally, is largely about the loss of values. Mm -hmm. We're dealing with it because there's different meaning now to everything. So it's not necessarily stealing. You know, carry gun now is yao. You know, I, I, you go to my village and a parent is celebrating a property built or the proceeds of that kind of thing mm -hmm. and saying, hey, you didn't steal. That's what all his mates are doing. You know, how do we bring people who know that what they are doing is bad, but they just want to give it a different name? The, the new Nigeria where it's not necessarily prostitution is uh, is the uh, hustling, mm -hmm. you know how do we bring people because they know they just want to give it a different name to give it the name that it is uh thank you it's important that we know that to achieve um, our goal the vision has to be clear all of us as much as possible you know you can't get everybody on the bus from day one but how we measure success in leadership is how many people are getting on the bus as we go. Mm. Yeah. So from day one, you just have skeptics, you have uh, you know, laggards, people yeah. who, don't, who don't believe in it. Yeah. But gradually, people start to see. And get on the bus. But back to what you said, what makes people, what, what, what helps you to get more people on the bus is the, how you help them uh, in reevaluating the values with which they live their lives. Uh, in a value-driven uh, society, everybody is trying to judge what they do based on the values that they hold dear mm -hmm. to themselves. One of the things that has affected our value orientation as a people um, is poverty. To a poor person uh, who wants to survive, many things are not wrong mm -hmm. because you are now using your survival instinct to <clears throat> judge <laughs> the values with which you live, mm -hmm. not what is right but what can keep me alive? Mm. You know, that's why we, we then choose the wrong words rather than using the right words. So we say stealing is not corruption. It's hustling. Yeah, it's hustling. Mm. Uh, Yahoo is not this and all. But you know that what I do, I don't live in isolation. We're Africans. We live on the principle of Ubuntu, which is I am because you are. Uh, we're connected with each other. How, do, how, how did that? We? Uh, yeah, well, well, that's, that's how, that's yeah. how we that's came, that's where we came from. Uh, going back to what Neymar yeah. said, that's where we came from. Yeah. Because as Africans, we, we had values. Yeah. Ubuntu is one of our values, which is, I, I val that's what Christianity calls, yeah, uh, so. love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Mm. Uh, how, how did I know? A lot of eat? questions for you, yes. so let me so, let you so pause let me you there. Ask, I have to yeah. You mentioned that it's, it's, it's very difficult to lead a people mm. when they are bleeding. Mm. And this also brings me to the role of the church. Because when everyone is bleeding mm. and requires healing, we were supposed to have institutions like the religious institutions that would help to assist government mm. in healing the people so that they are ready for that leadership. Mm. Now, where does the church, and this is not just the church now because you're a pastor, that's amazing, religious church, but religious institutions, what role do they play in helping the people to heal and understand their civic responsibilities? Mm. And what role do you think um, the leadership will take on to make people more trusting? Because mm. right now what we see, we don't see enough to trust. We can't believe in what we see because it's, the more you look the less you see so give me those two roles you yeah. think that um those yeah two so so the, the 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 religious institutions have a role one of the roles is to be the conscience of the nation mm. yeah whether you know whatever religion the conscience of the nation uh, we we stand for the truth and we steer the nation on the path of truth uh, um on the path of you know uh, collectivism uh, on the part where everybody's interest is protected. The moment religious institutions start to pander uh, to 
maybe a tribe or our own religion or this, we, we, we are making a great mistake uh, because we need to be the center and the pillar of truth and we have to be the conscience of the nation. The adherent of every religion, they're looking forward to their religious situation or the religious leaders uh, sometimes to just signal them, to show them um, how they should be thinking and all that. And when they start to see that they can't trust their leaders or the institution themselves are the ones saying um, uh, maybe uh, we should embrace this unity and stuff like that, it starts to affect how the people think. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So religious institutions uh, must be the conscience of the nation and then model models. The religious institutions must model nation building and what will make the nation work. Mm. Uh, there's nothing as soothing as seeing hope demonstrated in practical terms. You know, uh, uh, when hope is lost, <laughs> a lot is lost. Because if, if, when somebody is sick or bleeding, what the person wants to hear is don't give up. Yeah, uh, we're soon going to get there. Uh, you know, yeah. respite is here, mm. healing is here. Mm. But when you look up to uh, a place where you're supposed to get that hope from, and you can't get it because it's not model, it's not spoken about, yeah. uh, uh, and all that, the bleeding continues. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm happy you're talking about modeling. I have what well, I may consider a dilemma. Maybe you may not see it that way. Where, especially with uh, religious institutions, mm. where on the one hand, you know, we expect them to be strong and true through all times in an ever-changing, evolving world. Yeah. And then um, when they do that, we accuse them of just not being, you know, evolving as well or growing as the people are growing. And then we have an uh, institution that decides, okay, this is an ever-evolving world. We need to change. And people accuse religious institutions of pandering to things that may not be of value because they are trying to catch on to this ever-changing world. How do, you, how do you, as a pastor, as your church, and religious institutions now um, how do they place themselves so that they are not seen to pander and they are not seen to be outdated? Okay, thank you. Um, that's important, uh, the differences between values and methodologies. Yeah. We live true to our values, but in a changing world, you can vary your method. Um, there's a principle of true north. As we're here right now, uh, if I say each of us should point to the north, <laughs> you will be surprised. <laughs> Just trying to point yeah. where your north is. Uh -huh. <laughs> because Morales' north may be different from Nimat's north. Sure. Based on, they will just use north something to calculate yeah. their north and say, that's my north, this is your north. Mm. But if I came in here with a compass, mm. then the compass will resolve the issue for us. Mm. Yeah. Uh, because uh, we don't choose our north. I mean, in aviation, if you are flying and your pilot says, I, I came into this jet with my north, I don't need the compass in the aircraft, you're not going to get to where you're going. You're going to land in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. So, that, that, so uh, when the north does not change, that's what I'm saying, mm -hmm. which is the value. Leaders have to be principle-centered and value-driven. When we're principle-centered and value-driven, our methodologies can change. Things are changing around us. Mm -hmm. the, way, the way we dress, mm -hmm. even the way we communicate, mm. the technology we engage. So, so you have reached where we are. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, and all those things. Okay. But, the, the, but what should not change is the value and the principles Sadly, by which we live. We don't have that anymore. Mm. That's but for some people, changed. principles, is, the way they dress is a yeah. principle for them. Mm. And uh, then, I know, you see, the, the issue is this. Is it a yeah? real principle? It's not a real principle. <laughs> mm. Dressing is more about it's culture. Tangible, yeah. yeah, we learn it from each other. And each, each, each uh, society then have culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the culture, I mean, the dressing in Africa is different from the dressing in, in Britain. You understand what oh, I'm saying? Definitely. Europe. So it's cultural. Mm. Yeah, but when you talk about the principle like diligence or truth. Intangible. Yeah, principle. truth is truth. Yeah, it's either is black all. or white. We have reached where we are going. Yeah. Hmm. It is only here we have African time. We don't have, we don't really, do we really have those values? Back in primary school, values were drummed in. 
you know, at assembly grounds and all of that. But today, it's the school bus that will do a one way full of kids that will do a one way. Are those values, do we have them anymore? anymore yeah. Really? Yeah, we, we the, 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 the values seem to be eluding us, they're fading away, and it's a collective responsibility for all of us. Uh, and, you know, just like you just spoke about kids in primary school right now, look, this thing starts from home. You can imagine a child. Okay, let me give you an example. Um, my kids are a lot older now. Uh, my first daughter is 19. You know, she's an under, undergraduate. Um, uh, when they were younger, I remember one day I was driving <laughs> here in Lagos, and my kids were in the car. And the light was yellow, and I went. And my, the, my two daughters, I think one was maybe seven, and another one was five. They started an argument at the back of the car. One said, Daddy still drove off uh, on, you know, yeah, yellow yeah. lights. Yeah. And <clears throat> one said, That was wrong. The other one said, eh, Let's ask him. But, my, but, you know, the other one said, I read in a book that yellow means you have to slow down. Mm. It's not maybe a, not a complete stop, but you don't increase your speed. You actually slow down because what is coming next is red, red and you have to stop. Mm. And at the end of the day, I had to apologize to them mm. because I didn't want to teach them the wrong thing. Yeah. I could have argued my way and said, it just turned yellow and I felt I could go. And this is how... But then you confused values, them. Yeah, but I, yeah, I would have confused them, but I had to apologize to them. Oh, it's true. You are right. I should have stopped or I should have slowed down because what is coming next is red. So when, you, when we overlook a lot of those things and we just move on, we are raising another generation. You see, every generation mm. uh, is an improvement of the previous. So what I hear you If saying. we put uh, bad things in their heart, they're going to Ew. give us in a new dimension. So what, what, what talking about leadership. Yeah. I, want, I, want us, I, want us, I want us to, because the, the different parts of it, as I said, we're doing uh, the country, religion, and relationships and the home. Yeah. Um, let's bring it back to the home because you took us, you took us there. Leadership in the home is changing. Yeah. Because more women are now empowered. And more women don't feel like we are the neck anymore. We are the heads because we are all we have equal stakes here. So, um, what are you saying? I can't no follow now. Not <laughs> yeah. any head. I'm in just saying home. those many women <laughs> in the know, home now. You, just I'm just saying that I'm now empowered. Mm -hmm. um, the roles are changing. Um, even some of the men are not living up to their leadership roles anymore. Yeah. Um, some of them just feel like, listen, since you're making all the money, I'd rather just stay here and and and. and but women need them to, to, be, to be leaders. Mm -hmm. How do we help these men in, in homes where they're just not leading as they should anymore? Mm. Uh, the times are very tough, I, you know, but changing times will not really change principles. If not, we'll lead ourselves to anarchy. Mm. Yeah. Um, we, we have to be more uh, flexible as we go. But one thing is certain. Uh, <laughs> the man, traditionally speaking, is the head of the home. Leadership comes with responsibility. The problem that we have right now is people want to lead, but they don't want to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of men who want to assert themselves in their homes, mm -hmm. but they're not ready to take responsibility. Mm -hmm. So if I share responsibility, I should be willing to share part of my leadership. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I should be willing to like share part of my leadership. Um, so it, 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 you can't tell a woman we're going to share our strength 50-50, but yet she, she shouldn't have a say in any matter at home. You're going to create a, a, a state of you know, anarchy uh, because the woman starts to feel oppressed. Yeah. And, um, what, if she cannot, what if she doesn't share in the rent, for mm. instance? Mm for men that, you know, yeah. will not allow. And then she lives in the house. Yes. She's married to you. But yeah. because she didn't share, does it mean that she does not then have deserve that voice. respect of first refusal? No, 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 also the, money is not the only thing that gives you a voice in your home. I just use that as an, an example. example. Okay. Yeah, but it's not the only thing that gives you a voice. See, two people coming together. It's not a safe example. Because <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, you yes. You know, so uh, um, uh, thank you for, for pointing that out. See, um, in a home, two people came together and said, let's form a family unit. There's a minimum level of respect, trust, and, you know, and cordiality, and mm -hmm. friendship 
that should ensue yeah. if we want to go far yeah. with this arrangement. Sure. Yeah. And that respect says that um, I don't know it all. Mm. You are here because you're supposed to be my better half. Yeah. <laughs> you understand? You. Uh -huh. And you're supposed to watch my blind spot. See, when I concentrate like this, I can't see what is exactly. on the side. Mm. Uh -huh. Laser focus. So I have other people. And, the, and the, the most important person around me is my wife that should be able to cover oh, my, my blind spot, spot and tell me, oh, you're not saying that you need to say it this way. It is my best interest to, to respect listen. and listen uh, to that. If not, I, 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 I ignore at my peril. And that's what we're saying today. Mm. Many men who are, you know, uh, failing either morally or business-wise just because they refuse to listen to their spouses. And the same thing for women, too. I mean, as a relationship coach, I've sat with men, women, who have brought the brunt of not listening to their spouses, you know. So it's not even exclusive right. to men, yeah. even some women. Okay, yeah. so still on the home and relationship, some of the issues that we discuss here, one of, it come, one of the things that, would, uh, that has come up is, uh, let's say, a father and husband who financially is unable to, you know, carry the weight mm. for a period. This is not a lazy man. Yeah. This is a man unwilling to work, but he's unable to do it. And he has a partner who has it all. Um, in what other ways can he show leadership, you know, without feeling as if he's inadequate or not um, putting his weight in the home? You know, um, women love to have a sense of security from their home, mm -hmm. uh, that somebody's leading them. And leadership will not always be about money. If not, our values will be upside down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything will not be about so money. You, you know. Um, leadership is about vision. Leadership is about support. Leadership is about protection. So for a man to lead a woman who is empowered, an empowered woman, somewhat even more empowered than you are, mm -hmm. you have to play to your strengths, which are the intangibles. Yeah. How do you make a woman feel loved? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, how do you make a woman feel protected? That you have her best interest at, at, at all times. Okay. Yeah. How do you make a woman, you know, feel respected and feel appreciated that she has gone to work? You are, you don't have an income right now. Mm. Uh, my own understanding about income in a home, by the way, is that when two people come together and they have a purpose to fulfill, and they pray, and you know, God bless our work. When God sends money into that house, whether I sense it, He can choose who to send Whoever. it to. Whoever, yeah. okay. If he sends it through the man, it's our money. If he sends it through the woman, it's our okay. money. We are one, okay. one family unit, you know. So if we have that at the back of our minds, whoever <laughs> is bringing in the money per time needs support, needs respect, needs love, needs appreciation. If you put all those things on the table, if a man will watch over the home, cover the blind spot of the woman, you know, support the woman, do things like, you know, school help you look run. through uh, school runs, help you look through your business books. Uh, you men know, have been men. thought that that's yeah. make you. Wait, are they sick? allowed to cook? Are they allowed to men, cook? Men will tell you that means they can't. Everybody eats. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, anybody can cook. Also, do you cook? cook. Also, God, man, do you cook? I, I, I do, not quite often. Okay. I, I must say, because maybe my wife is watching now, she may say, <laughs> <laughs> let me give, I mean, the last time I cooked was December. Oh, uh, well, that's quite mean? recent. Uh, I, I, what did I mean? I think it was rice or something. <laughs> oh, and then we were away with the, with the kids, something. you know, um, uh, we were away for like four or five days. One of the days I told my daughters and my wife, I'm taking care of dish, dish, dishes, everything. I washed and the no, ladies, they, my girls make sure they pack the sink. Well, well. Yeah. Yeah. How did yeah. 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 So you can feel like it. I, I, I did Let it. Let me it take this so. call from yeah. Shola. Let me call this. Shola from Lekki, thanks for calling. Okay, morning. Morning. Hi, this is my first time. Welcome to the show. Okay, you've been doing a good job. Um, I, love, I love that topic. You know, as a couple, actually, I just got out from a divorce because... Um, of emotional support, physical support. <clears throat> so in terms of, um, I think everybody has their duty and you have to contribute. It shouldn't be weighed on one side because as a man, what you're supposed to give, apart from financial support, 
I'm not even being keen to financial support that the men should do 100% because we have come of age now. I don't think a wife should just be a housewife. So in terms of financial support, I am regardless of financial support, what is very, very important is emotional, physical support for men. Mm. Even if the woman can take 100%, no problem. But you must show the faith. Leadership is not about money. Mm. It's about you really protecting your own, protecting your wife from your re from his relatives, protecting her from anything that will give her a headache, no matter even if she's providing. But as a woman, if you are providing, you don't have to show that you are providing. There should be a way of you really respecting your husband. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, I, I, you know, now that we're talking about uh, marriage and relationships, I would like you to help us understand, because some of the problems that I see here and perceive in... You know, spousal relationships is usually that of ego, where we have allowed society to dictate to us what a man should or should not do. Some people are already arguing in our comment session, should a man cook? Why must a man cook? We've assigned roles to the man and the woman, and sometimes when we see couples who are able to understand each other and swap those roles, it becomes a problem. And out of the shame of, I don't want people to think I am weak, I will not be able to do this when you really know that you're supposed to help in doing this to just balance out the thing. So what advice would you give to men who sit and feel, because I am a man, I was raised to be a man this way, no matter what happens, there are certain things I cannot do for you, find your way around it or die in the stress. Hmm. I think it's very important for uh, men and women alike to understand that every relationship is unique. Mm. Yeah. See, we get into trouble when we start to compare ourselves and pick up traditional roles. Tradition will not always work. It's just a guide. It may not work in my own relationship. Mm. You understand? Those roles are just traditional roles. A woman cook, a man drives. Uh, what a man can do, sometimes a woman can do better. And what a woman can do, a man can do better. The most important thing, uh, when, if you want to be principle-centered and not pander to tradition, is uh, who is available, mm. who is most skilled. Yes. Yeah. In, in, there are homes that, that I've seen where the woman is a better fund manager than the man. Yeah. It is wisdom for the man to say, look, even if I make 70% of the money of our household income or 80% of it, my spouse is a better manager. manager. Yeah. Uh, there, there's uh, uh, um, the money language thing that we teach in, in, in relationship coaching. What's the money language of your spouse? Is he a spender, a safe, saver, you know, and all that? Some people just have this capacity to keep money. Why some people, are, you know, spend trips? They, they, just, uh -huh. they want to do lao lao. And just, so we need to be able to say, who is the best mm. in, for, this area. in this situation? It's just like when you're on the football field. You can't say because uh, uh, some, uh, this person is the oldest person in the team, mm. he should be the keeper. No, yeah. <laughs> everybody has their area of strength. If we cease uh, to, you know, pander to tradition, yeah. especially those traditional roles of this person should do this, that person should do that, and we say, we want to make progress in our home. We want to use the things that God has given us and maximize them, mm -hmm. get better efficiency from make them. Make it about strengths and weaknesses. Yes. Yeah. Let's, because we have to wrap up very soon, and I, I want, I'd like to come to you now as a pastor, within a huge church, you have thousands of followers, you have a lot of people who <laughs> depend on you for guidance and direction. How do you sustain that nucleus family or your family? How do you have time for family? Do you take your family out? Do you have your me times? And, and how, how are you able to separate? Because, you know, pastors, I've, I mean, I heard some stories, and pastors are finding it difficult, especially when single women come to your office. Pastor, oh my goodness. Or, you know, all women will come, they come and cry, and your wife wondering, what is she doing in pastor's office for many hours? So do you get those kind of issues, and how do you deal with them, where you're overwhelmed by members coming to need you physically, emotionally, and draining you, and then the family is there saying they don't, they don't see you? Uh, thank you very much for that, Mara. You see, the important thing that leaders generally need to understand is that uh, there's no Superman leader. Mm. Yeah. Whether you're a pastor or you're a president or you're you know, a CEO, 
if you are first of all a man or a woman, as the case may be, before you become a leader. And the human frailties and weaknesses will always be there. What makes a better person is that you are overcoming your weaknesses mm. and you're maximizing your strength. Mm. All right? You are, you, are, you are building, I mean, you are getting stronger in the areas where you are weak. That's where you're you are better. So, but primarily speaking, you are human. And you have your weaknesses, you know, and your strengths and all that. Now, every leader, including a pastor, must learn to practice vulnerability. So our church members uh, within and outside of the country in the places where we've planted churches, they know. Anytime I show up, I tell them, primarily, uh, I'm not superhuman. I enjoy the grace of God. <laughs> the power of God is available when I minister, but I'm a man. Hmm. And I'm free to tell stories about my relationship with my wife. My wife has gotten used to it right now. Something can happen at home yesterday. We had an argument, and I get on the pulpit the next day and say, uh, we even had an argument yesterday. So if you're arguing your home, don't beat yourself with a bat on the head. It happens. Uh, it happens. Mm. Uh, the only thing is I don't allow it to go beyond this point. Even the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. not. Yeah. So anger is human emotion. Uh, it's just that you must not allow it to, uh, anger to get you to the point where you are cursing mm. or you are thinking evil. Uh, but it's okay to be hungry because you are still human. So if we practice vulnerability, people understand that we're not essentially super. People human. don't want to see that vulnerability. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I saw it here on your show once when I kissed my wife. Yes. Last year. And you people Thank got it. Thank you, Pastor. That. <laughs> I was you heard what I was getting into. Uh, you know, so, people was, don't want to see. Yeah, yeah, I just recognized that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that so we just finished a leadership comp, I mean, a, 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 a conference in July last year or so. And then we got home. We just got back home from church. And I think uh, somebody was with us, maybe my sister-in-law or something. I was still saying, oh, it was a powerful sex. I said, oh, thank God. Thank God for my wife also. And then I held that close. And I, and I think my son was recording, and I, I, kissed I kissed her. And it became you know. a topic. And uh, it because went Because some of us don't like seeing pastors kissing on national wow. television. Wow. Yeah, but pastor is human. You. Yeah, Thank you. And, uh, and then a married to, human. But yeah, until I see Daddy human. Joe kissing. <laughs> but you know, you know, Daddy Joe is in the older generation. Yeah, so yeah. some, some things that. evolve over the generations. Mm -hmm. I mean, essentially, if they, you are not breaking any principle. Yeah. But you see, why would I allow that to even get out? Yeah, because I put it on my own Instagram handle. Okay. Is to help other people to see uh, that it's okay to be cordial. Mm, to be affectionate. To be affectionate. Mm. To your spouse. To your spouse. In public and, or And don't, women. Don't, don't play superhuman. Don't say, oh, I'm now, I'm a, you know, uh -huh, I'm a senator. Uh, so I be, I'm a pastor. I must be this rigid. No, your children, they know you as father before they know you as pastor. Mm. Yeah, and they don't want to relate with you a CEO or pastor mm. or this or that. They want to relate you with as you as daddy. daddy. So, All right. Yeah. Before yeah. I ask you the personal question, I wanted you to help a friend. Mm. You know, so she's in the marriage where I think the husband doesn't know how to take account, give account. Mm. They had a situation where he wanted something to happen, someone to stay with them, and she was like, I don't know this person. I'll be putting this person up with my kids, and you know, mm. he insisted, and so she allowed a person to stay but then something happened what she was afraid of happened and it's happening from his side of the family where the woman is supposed to be shot don't say anything and they've said he dealt with it but has not he doesn't think it's okay to give account to his wife that okay i made this decision is wrong i put you and your and the kids exposed you to the in harm's way i am sorry he thinks because it's from my side of the family we mustn't talk about it. So I said to her, if it was your own side, or has it ever happened where you've had to talk to him from, if you had someone coming from your side on why they should stay or why, or why they can't stay? Have you ever done, you know, she said, ah, because I'm one, I have to even beg him, beg him. Why, how do you advise men mm -hmm. to handle a situation where things that they decided has failed? Mm -hmm. family? I think everyone needs to embrace the value of humility. Yeah, uh, and one of the traits of a good leader is humility. If you want to lead at home or to lead at work, you have to um, humble yourself when you need to and be quick to apologize. One of the traits of real humility is the ability to accept wrong. Mm. Yeah, because you see that I am not perfect and I'm not superhuman, a superhuman. 
So uh, you, are, you are quick to accept that. Uh, what's happening in this situation is a play of ego. Mm. The man is just being unnecessarily, unnecessarily being a man now. egocentric. See, those are the things that we have been taught wrongly. Mm. Yeah. That, yeah, uh, that, and it's, it's, it's bad leadership when we're taught, even in family, that a man being the head of the family is word is law. You know, it, it's, it's, never uh, apologize. it's just cultural and tradition that we have to deal with. I was, um, I was on a, a, I think a TV show too recently where I was talking about my own side of the country. I'm a Yoruba man. My son name is Akinlabi. Um, when we see a traditional ruler, we call them Kabiesi which means kabiosi. In, in English, it means unquestionable. Can do no wrong. Yeah, can also do no the wrong. Crown, the crown is yeah. beyond any wrong in English. And, uh, so the, that's the way some people carry it also. So I'm the king of my home. Mm. I can do no wrong. So you must accept my wrong as a right <laughs> in mm. any case. Oh. But in the well, context of a married relationship, mm -hmm. you are trampling on the will and the emotion of the other person. <laughs> and it is wickedness. Ew. So you are a leader, you are not a king, so to speak, in that respect. Yeah. Mm. You are not the so traditional the king. Are saying you are my lord, king you are not your lord. Uh, no, it's okay. It is eulogy, mm. in my own opinion. You can give you the praises. Yeah, you, you can, can collect the praises. Collect the praises. But then be and human. Be humble. But be, yeah. be I'm, human. I'm not talking you, of you collecting. I'm talking of the one that tells you, I am the lord mm -hmm. of this house. That's, yeah. the, that's not the collecting praises. That's the person that's telling you. I see. That is taking. Uh, um, leadership too far mm. because the ba there's ev to everything there's a balance there the balance of good leadership mm. is humility yeah. yeah so that you can be uh, leading with conscience mm. you can be you know leading with character mm. <laughs> you understand because you can lead without character mm. yeah. humility is not a word we hear very often with leadership especially in our climate and, so and that's what is creating problem for us because what there are values the that we have to embrace. Like this situation now, the man should have accepted wrong that, oh, maybe that's a bad decision. Next time I will listen yeah. better. What yeah. should we have to wrap up? But thank you so thank much, you, Pastor. Sir. It's you know, my pleasure. We thank it. you very much. We have to bring you back soon. We'd like to meet your wife at some point. So it's <laughs> nice to have you guys together. I, 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 Since I you are the kissing couple, that. we'll see if we can. The kissing man of God. kissing man of God. All right, that's all we can take on today's show. Hope we learned a few things as we have. See you tomorrow. Bye for now.